What is going on guys? Coach Joe, Garage De La Swole. And in this video, we're gonna be doing something different here. If you guys like it, let me know down below in the comment section. But I am going to do kind of a react video and I'm gonna do it my way, which is usually positive spin on everything, but where I can add in some value, I want to. What we have here is I was stumbling upon the YouTubes and I saw that John Hack had competed in Strongman. Now this isn't the first time that he's competed in strongman. He's done a couple competitions in the past, but he is well known for his powerlifting accolades. He has multiple all-time world records in multiple weight classes and arguably the best powerlifter for his era. Absolute machine when it comes to the squat, bench, and deadlift. He's been competing, I think, since 2013 ish. So that's about a 10 year career. And in that time, like I said, all time world records, multiple weight classes, insane total. So when we look at the squat, he's got a 345 kg squat, which is equivalent to 760.6 pounds. Bench press is going to be 267.4 kilos, which is 589.7. That's insane. And then the deadlift's gonna be 410, which is 903.9 pounds, which is a total of 1,022, or in pounds, 2,254.2. Now, these numbers were pulled off the internet, maybe things have changed, but regardless, okay, this guy is a 90 kg competitor for the most part, so that's gonna be the 198 class. Insane strength, like right off the bat. I follow him on Instagram, and following for a, a while. Uh, we haven't had too much conversation, but I always just love watching his lifts because they blow my mind every single time. And then I just try to comprehend his body weight for the amount of weight that he's lifting. Right off the bat, I think it's super cool that he is doing strongman, and I'd like to see kind of how it correlates. So he competed uh, July 23rd, I believe it's in the UK. This was a 90 kg class competition. And from what he said in the video, this is like a stacked class. So. You know, we're trying to see how he does against some of the best guys. So I'm going to start kind of rolling some footage. I think there were six events, including a tiebreaker that he had, or maybe seven events, including a tiebreaker, which typically in a strongman competition, you have five events. If there was a tiebreaker, six events for most local shows, once you get to the national or pro level, typically they have a couple of days with multiple events per day. So at the end of the competition at a higher level, you can be doing a lot of events and those are just long, brutal days. So we'll get right into it. Okay, I'm gonna start just with his training footage from each event, give you my reaction, maybe some things I would add value to, and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. So first event right off the bat, I believe is the log, and I believe this log was for uh, a max, okay? So typically in Strongman, we have either rep events, distance events, hold events, uh, or we're gonna be doing something for reps, right? So uh, this is gonna be a max rep. Typically you get three attempts. So just kind of watching here how things look. I mean, dude, this guy is just a brick poop house. And uh, we're looking at 264 pounds here for his uh, attempt. Really good roll, love that roll. I'm just gonna pause it there. So he had an awesome lap position, and when we're doing that log, uh, lap position, we wanna get that log up as high as we can. A lot of people try to power clean it up, and it's more of a static pull into your body with like a row technique, and then we're gonna use that momentum, and we're gonna drive through our hips and roll it up. Uh, so right off the bat, from a technical perspective, I absolutely love uh, the roll there. Has a decent front rack, and then he decides to push press uh, which just shows how strong he is. That's 264 pounds, easy push press, no stability issues. Now this is 286 pounds. Once again, awesome roll, right? We're in that good front rack position. Does the dip and drive for the push press, has a nice saw lockout, no stability issues, solid. I mean, it looks like there's way more room in the tank. So his third attempt, 308, nice smooth lock or uh, roll that we do see a little bit of instability in the feet here. Honestly, just when weight gets heavy, okay, 
every little centimeter uh, matters, okay? It's almost like Olympic lifting where if you're off by a little bit, it just kind of can set the tone for the rest of the lift. So I just see a little bit of shaking from looks like his right foot, just trying to make sure that his feet are where they want to be. Not a big deal. Then we dip up, oh, doesn't get it. Come on, big dog, let's go. See, we keep seeing that foot kind of pitter pattern around, we're losing energy. And then I think he calls it there. Overall, phenomenal strength, great static strength. I, I think with the log, it just came down to uh, maybe more exposure to that implement at heavier weight, just kind of just more reps, getting used to how that feels. Um, in terms of his stance, I'm not really sure, you know, if there's much I would change from his stance. The only thing I would say is when we're doing that dip, we want to make sure that we're driving those knees out, keeping and maintaining that good front rack position. Because if we dip and the knees come forward, it typically tends to drop that log forward. So that's the only thing I would say there. Uh, and then when it pressed, it looked like he almost was kind of leaning a little bit back where when he pressed the log almost kind of like fell back for a second and that just caused more instability. So just getting a really nice solid front rack, I know I'm kind of doing this you know, with you guys, getting a nice big brace, keeping those knees driven out as we go for the dip and maintaining the same structural posture uh, with our upper body so that we can just have a nice bar path uh, with the press from up and down. But once again, you know, that's 300 some pounds this guy's looking real good. Ooh, all right, we got the deadlift. So this deadlift, I believe it is 640 pounds. Yeah, so 639 pounds, and this is gonna be for reps. Now, without even watching this, I'm excited because this dude is an absolute deadlift machine, but I wanna see how he does with his reps. And he does pull conventional, so I think that that's nice versus a power lifter who always pulled sumo, and then they had to switch to conventional. He already has that conventional setup and experience, but the only thing that would be a question is just doing something for this many reps. You know, one, boom, looks solid. Two, easy. Three, four, come on. Five, let's go. See, that dude doesn't want none of that. That dude to the right, he's like, I'm done, bro. I'm done, I'm done, keep going, keep going. Yes, super strong. And this is no suit, he's just wearing a belt. He's as raw as it gets for strong man right now. It's kind of my style though. Let me see, yeah, one more. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Nice, dude. Oh, he's got one more, he's got one more. All or nothing, big dog. Let's go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, right there, so close. I believe that was 10 reps. I believe that was 10 reps. Uh, but yeah, I mean, dude's raw, okay? So he's got no suit on, just gonna be a belt and straps. Thing with the axle bar is it's a stiff bar. So there's no bend or anything. And obviously the diameter is much bigger. Even with straps, it still is harder, okay? So a lot of people think, oh, well they have straps on, it must be easier. No, because that bar is probably two to two and a half inches thick. That's a whole other animal. And obviously with it being a stiff bar, those axle bar dubs and straw man, are just terrible and they suck. Uh, but he managed to get 10 reps, which is pretty awesome. My only thing would be, uh, it looked like he was resetting every time. I don't know if that was the rules for the competition, uh, but I would be interested to see if he did train like touch and go, if that would help him. Uh, the issue with touch and go is it can break down technique, but at the same time it is faster. So it's kind of like pick and choose, you know, which one you want to do. Sometimes I've done touch and go, other times I've done resets. I typically, like the resets, uh, just because I can get really good technique, although it's a bit slower. Uh, I think it just saves me energy from, you know, not having uh, poor technique that really just drains me. But yeah, so second event absolutely crushes it. You know, stoked to see it. Could have maybe got that last rep, but it just shows that he was going all out. Usually it's a 60 second time cap or something like this. Uh, so 10 reps, super respectful uh, and just an absolute animal. So third event, I think, is the Husafel Sandbag. And this is, I believe, for distance, so 330-pound bag. Picks it up, hikes it up, and he's going. This absolutely tanks your posterior chain. So your glutes and hamstrings, and probably with this, even the grip, uh, just get absolutely fried. And I would definitely think with his grip, the way I see it, that, man, he's just like crab clawing it, holding it in. I remember when I first did something like this with a keg, uh, my 
butt cheeks and hamstrings just cease to to work uh, but he's moving at a good pace i like the fact that you know for being a 90 kg guy like speed matters you got to be quick you got to be athletic seems like he's got the full package here get a little slower this is where i hike it up get a hike boom nice nice oh no the legs the legs are tanking the legs are tanking my man <laughs> love it love it uh so Biggest thing with that, maybe a little critique would be, you know, as he's doing a turn, try to hike it up real quick just to get a better uh, grip on it. It just looked like it was kind of weighing him down little by little. Uh, but, you know, that, that's a tough event. He, he did really well, I think, for that event. He got third for his distance. Uh, so, great job. No more critiques other than it, it just sucks. And I just love how he gave it it all. And... Just kind of belly flopped on the end there. Fourth bet's going to be farmer carries. This is 30 meters total. Uh, and this is going to be with 330 per hand. I absolutely hate farmers. I'm trying to get better at them. I, I don't I don't dislike them for the event. I dislike them because I'm not good at them. So I, I've been working on my grip strength like crazy to get better with these farmer handles. So let's see how he does here. Taking off, taking off, taking off. Drop, pick and turn. Good. Nice, he's moving pretty quick. He's got a good pace here. There we go. Let's go, let's go. This is the finish line. Come on. Oh, grip gave out a little bit. You got a quick pick, quick pick. Oh. Once again, a grip. Nice. Yeah, so this is just going to be a grip event. Um, my only thing is, and this isn't necessarily wrong or right. Everybody has different preference on this. It just looks like his hands are a little bit too forward on, on the handle. So when he picks them up, they kind of fly up. Um, some people, you know, like to go in the front. Some people like to go in the back because I think kind of scoops them into it. Some people like to go right in the middle. I'm more of just a middle kind of grab guy. The only reason that this may worry me, not saying for him specifically, but athletes in general doing strongman farmers, is sometimes the back may hit the ground. And if you hit the ground, then you're going to start doing the wobble of death. That never ends well. So if you have the middle, you're gonna have that nice even spacing from the ground and uh, the bottom of the handle. So be able to kind of carry that across. Now, you know, for him, I don't think that it really made a huge difference. I think it just came down to grip. Um, I think at some point in this video, he talks about having a callus or a hand tear or something like that. So yeah, obviously it's just painful, it sucks, and it's a grip event, uh, but he did really well. I think he placed fourth in this event. Uh, which is awesome. So I know in the log, it probably wasn't the highest or, or maybe one of the better performances he had, but if you start stacking these higher, you know, place finishes, overall, since there are six or seven events for, for this competition, he could end in a really good place depending on how things go. After this, I believe there was an event that wasn't filmed and that was a yoke to a sandbag load. I think the yoke was 750. And then he had 260 or 270 pound bags. I'll check. 264 pound bags that he had to load over. And he talks about going really fast with the yoke in the first sandbag. And then just not able to get that second sandbag over because he was absolutely gassed. So, uh, you know, once again, it's just something to think about for the future. You know, if this is something he wants to consider. And we'll talk about it more at the end of this video. Kind of my, my final thoughts. Uh, but... He's athletic, so he's athletic, he's moving fast, and he's strong as ball statically. So, you know, I think we got we got some trouble on our hands with this dude if he keeps competing in strongman, especially in that 90 or even the 105 class uh, with someone with that much prior strength experience, then just kind of fine-tuning things, oof, going to be gnarly. Uh, but after that, I think we go to the power stairs. So we got the kind of duck walk set up here to the power stairs, there's three of them. Uh, it goes up, it's a 252 or a 352 uh, walk, then a 374 walk, and then a 396 walk. And to be completely honest with you, I have never done a competition with these in there. I have done the training for these specifically, just for fun. Um, so I'm not the best to comment on really, you know, what I see, but nonetheless, fun to watch. So let's see how it does. Easy, quick pick, right up, boom, boom. But I mean, look at those hops. He's like the freaking Energizer Bunny. Let's go. Down the stairs quick. This is really just a speed event. If one step, you know, you get caught on, that can totally screw you up. 
Um, so, but first two looked awesome. Third one, okay, right there, maybe a little bit of a hiccup, but he, he recovers quickly, right back up to it. Boom, done. Did he get it? Yes, thumbs up, we are solid. So with that, like I said, it's gonna be a speed event, and for, for anyone doing that, you wanna just keep a nice, consistent pace with the technique that can go with that pace. If you start going too fast, and something happens along the way, that one little hiccup, maybe you don't make it up to the first step, or maybe you jump up and slip or something like that, that can cost you time where someone could easily you know, get that advantage and, and uh, you know, beat you. But overall, I mean, he looks fast. And like I said, it's probably, he only has a couple competitions under his belt for strongman. So, you know, future is looking good for this dude. I think after that, uh, put him in a tie, tie for second place, I believe. So they had to settle this with the sandbag Husafel hold, which is just sounds absolutely miserable. Once again, this is probably gonna be just more posterior chain and grip. Obviously, once that grip goes, it's gonna pull you forward. You're probably gonna drop it. Uh, it's just best to hike it up as high as you can. Like you can see the guys competing against how much higher he has it versus John. John's just like, yeah, dude, I'm done. <laughs> but regardless, nonetheless, he came out with a third place finish. And this is some of the top dudes in the 90 kg class. Uh, absolutely phenomenal overall for not having that much strongman experience. Uh, or the with the sport of strongman and coming from a powerlifting background. So just going to give some of my final thoughts. If you guys watch this whole video, which I'll just link down below, he talks more about his experience, what was going through on his end with other competitions, training, etc. So I don't want to take away from that. I want you guys to go over there. But overall, like I said, this dude's an absolute beast of a human being. He has all-time world records in powerlifting uh, for multiple weight classes, huge total, static, animal. And I think this is just really cool to see the crossover when strength sport athletes do something else in the strength sport realm. So we have a high level or elite level uh, power lifter now coming into strongman. And I think the training really complements each other because a lot of the base of strongman is going to be things like squat, benching, deadlifting, pressing, stuff like that. And then you're just going to add in implements that are gonna be specific for your show, or maybe fine tune some attributes that are gonna make you better at strongman, but overall, there's still strength involved. So it's not like somebody who's going from powerlifting to endurance running, or powerlifting uh, into CrossFit or something like that, where I think the two can really be intermixed. And I've even thought that when I'm doing my strongman training, is man, like I could probably hop into a powerlifting competition, probably wouldn't be the best, because I wouldn't be so specific, but it's enough where I can probably do pretty well overall. So kind of maybe what he's thinking. I'm not sure if he has future endeavors of maybe switching gears from powerlifting to strongman, but I think if he did that, he would be just a freaking stud uh, once he fine tunes a little bit of the technique, getting more exposure, not having so many other maybe powerlifting competitions in the background of his mind that he needs to be training for. And I think one of the things he had talked about was his bench going down substantially from training uh, for strongman. And that is the one trade off is I don't do much bench pressing, but my overhead has skyrocketed. Now, if I wanted to get into powerlifting, I probably would reduce the overhead volume, maybe not even do it that much at all, and gear more towards uh, bench pressing to get specific at that. I think it's great that in his video he talks about how powerlifters should get involved with strongman if they could. I think they'd really enjoy it. And I think the bottom line for him is just more competition exposure, right? I think he talks about, you know, being nervous, uh, you know, being in a different environment, those types of things. And that will all get better as he competes more, right? Going to different venues, playing with different implements, uh, figuring out maybe nutrition protocols for a strongman competition versus a powerlifting competition. Because, yes, they are alike, but there are minor differences. So, you know, if he's thinking about doing this in the future, man, freaking more power to you. I would love to see how he does at bigger strongman shows such as nationals or worlds like OSG type of thing like that. I think he already got an invite to OSG and he declined because of an injury or something like that. But I think if he puts his mind to this, he could easily be the next big thing in strongman uh, and potentially you know be on the podium for some world shows. So that's my hot take on it. I think he's absolutely awesome, proud of the dude. It's cool for trying something different, putting yourself out there getting uncomfortable and I think if he sticks with this like I said he's just going to be another freaking shark in the strongman world especially in those lighter weight classes like the 90 or the 105 uh, but
Go over to his channel, okay, watch the full video, see what your thoughts are on that. Make sure you guys subscribe to him, follow him on Instagram. Like I said, I've been a long time follower and subscriber, so I find his content very interesting and just entertaining to watch because he's so freaking strong. Uh, but that's pretty much all I got. So if you guys like the video, comment down below with your thoughts on these kind of reaction style videos. If you want me to react to other videos, put them down below. Uh, and I just appreciate you guys so much. On top of that, we do have some ways you can support the channel. One, obviously liking, subscribing. That means the absolute world to me. If you're looking on more avenues on how to monetize or help me monetize, we have the Patreon, $10 a month. I put all exclusive content on there. Stuff from behind the scenes, focusing on obviously training, but other things like mental health uh, and just like kind of hacks that will just help you level up in wherever you're at in your life. So worth the investment, 10 bucks a month. The other thing is we have the programming app, which I'll put the link down below, 21 plus programs. I'm putting more out the next week or two. So there'll probably be about 30 on there uh, by the time you guys are going to get on the app. And I just appreciate that. All that money helps me continue to create content for you guys. So it, look at it as an investment to yourself that comes back to you by travel to go work with the people you wanna see me work with, uh, have cool stuff to train with, give you feedback on, etc. So. Thank you guys so much, and I'll catch you guys next time. Stay a lean, mean, strength, health machine. Peace.